Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today I'm gonna guide you in a very, very colorful and funny activity, extremely simple. For this practice, you don't need any type of particular skill, so it's perfect for any age and any level. It's the perfect activity to do with some friends, with your kids, so have your kids doing it if they have a play date and you wanna keep them as far as possible from video games or stuff like that. I did this activity with my students and they really loved it. And I did it also another time by myself with a couple of adult friends just to do something fun while we will have your RT and our conversation. For this activity, you need simple and basic materials such as a piece of copy paper and uh, markers, any brand that you have available. This time, it doesn't really matter if they are washable or permanent markers because we are not gonna use any water and we're working on paper. So the result will be extremely, you know, exactly the same, regardless of the type of markers that you're going to use. This is also the perfect activity since it's like it's so simple and there is no stress due to the difficulty of the project. It's going to be the perfect opportunity for you to review your personal connection with colors. I will, for, you know, time reason, because I don't want the video to be too long and I want to give you the opportunity to for you to practice according to your schedule, I will divide this practice in two videos and two parts. Today I'm going to focus on the warm side of the color wheel. So all warm and hot colors such as yellow, light orange, orange, dark orange, red, red violet. If you're a fan of pink and hot pink, you can include those two colors in the palette because they are considered hot. Okay, if you don't like the pink or if you don't have them, focus on just the primary, secondary, and tertiary warm colors. And then another time, we're going to take care of the cold side of the color wheel. You also need the black markers, any brand that you have available. This time, don't use an extra fine, just use a regular tip markers because it's going to facilitate the practice. You have two ways to uh, practice with me. You can watch this video, maybe speed it up a little bit and then practice at your own time, pace and convenience, or you can pause after instructions, get your materials ready and practice with me, as I hope that you will do, because I like to imagine uh, all of us uh, practicing this virtual giant uh, art room all together. One last thing, very important, you need to cover the surface uh, regardless of the type of markers that you're using, because we're using a very, very thin paper. The markers will pass through and they will spoil and ruin the surface. So mostly if it's wood, they will penetrate. It's gonna be really hard for you to clean them up. You can use a, a cloth, a plastic cloth. You can use, I'm using an old journal that I'm putting underneath. Whatever you have available, even if you just have paper, use another couple of sheets to put underneath the ones that you will be working on and for uh, to avoid the video to be too long, I'm gonna fold the paper in a half, we're gonna fold the sheet in a half and we're gonna cut it. So you might need some scissors available. Now let's get ready and I'm gonna switch the camera so we can have some fun together. Okay guys, this is our piece of paper. As you see, I'm using an old journal to save the, my table from getting all like spoiled by the markers. We are going to make sure that the corner and the edge of the paper match and then we are going to flat our paper, grab a pair of scissors and then cut our paper in a half. So the cut doesn't have to be a precision cut, it doesn't really matter. As long as we know that we divide the paper in two halves, so we have one half for warm colors and we are going to save the other ones for the cold colors. Now, something very satisfying, you're going to crumble your paper. Remember that it's copy paper, right? So you want to be some, you know, kind of gentle because we don't want to break the paper. But we just want to create all of this. Oh my, look at that. So nice. You see, it happened. If it happens, we're going to put a piece of tape on the other side at the end. Not in that. Now you see you have your paper. You're going to prep. And uh, what I did the first time is that I went over all these like uh, lines that the paper create with a pencil and then with the markers. This time we're gonna go straight with markers to save some time, right? So we're gonna flat it back. And now just very spontaneously, maybe if you see that you wanna have a little more 
kind of a little busier pattern, you can keep like crumbling the paper a little more. And then once you think that you have enough, we are going to start just to go on top of these lines. They of course are very segmented. They're not perfect. So not precision lines. You're gonna just have fun and recreate this pattern that the paper created after we crumbled it. You will have a bigger section, smaller section. This practice uh, actually is got an idea that I got thinking about uh, stained glass. I love stained glass. I don't know if you're familiar with the technique. I really love to watch a video, videos of people uh, creating beautiful stained glass windows or pieces. I have a couple of friends in Italy who are amazing artists, stained glass artists, and they also do uh, workshop and courses. My younger son actually won a scholarship, so this summer he's going to attend a one week full immersion um, workshop. I'm kind of jealous, and so he will make uh, he will learn about the Tiffany technique, uh, and uh, I'm so curious and, and so look forward to see what he created. So this one is definitely much easier, the one that we are doing, much cheaper, because for a school budget, I probably would never be able uh, to have a, like a stained glass at real workshop, because we are a small school, and I also teach until nine graders, right? Some high school might have it. In that case, uh, good for those students. It's fantastic. And so this is, was my idea. And the students really loved it because, as you see, it's so relaxing. You can have a conversation. You can drink your coffee, your tea, your juice, whatever you like. Uh, you can do it with friends by yourself just to shake off maybe the tension of the day. If you have been very, very busy. For the kids, it's also an amazing activity because you can actually do it multiple times using different color palettes, focusing on what type of colors, what kind of colors you are using. You can do it with pencil. I just feel that I tried it with pencil and it's very beautiful. It's nice and gentle. I feel that markers will. It, they render better this idea of glass. So this is why I decided to do it with you with markers, just because I tried both and I think that this one is more rewarding and it looks better. As you can see, I accidentally broke the paper a little bit and it's fine. I will just be very careful and at the end I will put a little piece of tape so it's going to be safe and I can save it in my journal. This is also like, uh, for example, after you finish, you can decide to frame this piece for the kids. It would be so nice and so cool. And since uh, it's so simple, right, and spontaneous, uh, you can just uh, focus on the quality of your coloring inside. So if you're doing this activity with kids and you are uh, guiding them, just remind them that we are using just the warm side of the color wheel so it's a good exercise for them to you know become more familiar with the color wheel itself but also focus on the quality of the technique of coloring so you tell them we should not see any gaps or any scribble because we want to pretend that, that we are working with glass so at the end we want to have this beautiful like a smooth feelings right Don't stress yourself too much if you're not going exactly on the lines that the paper create. You're just following in a very spontaneous way. If you see that some of the spaces are too big, you want to make them smaller, do so by adding another line inside. Lines are not perfect, as you can see, I go really with the flow. Just such a beautiful feeling, right? No specific plan, 
We cannot really have an idea of how the piece will look like until the very end. And we just go with it and we go with the flow. Another life lesson that art teaches. If you want to have some nice music in the background, if you want to do it silence, you can turn my voice off. <laughs> I know I talk a lot, but that's my Italian side. I can converse, definitely. If you need to go slower, go slower, please. If you're faster, go faster. You do you. You can always pause the video, play it again. Of course, your paper will look slightly different, which is also what makes this project so pretty when you do it with a group, because at the end, you can compare and contrast, right? Because, you know, there is no way to predict it, right? Not Two people can fold and crumble the paper exactly in the same way. So it's a light, nice surprise. And once again, another lesson, we embrace the unexpected. That is not really planned. It's a very like a spontaneous and mindful activity. We are present to this experience, but we embrace it the way it is. Even if it's not exactly what we expected. We are kind of interpreting right now what the paper set up for us. And I'm all done with mine. Now, if you need to keep going because you have more, keep going before you switch to the color. I probably want to add one here. I see some paper folding and probably sort of here to make it a little more proportionate with the rest. And then I'm gonna put away my black and I'm gonna start to do the coloring. I have all of my warm color prepared. So prepare for yourself all the warm color so you're not going to, you're not getting confused. And let's do this. So as I always say to my students, instead to switch one marker, you know, you use it once and then you put it back. We are going to use one color at a time and spread it in out in this design. So very spontaneously, without thinking too much, you're going to decide which um space you're gonna color with the yellow we start from the yellow you can use this technique you can use the small strokes whatever is the technique that you like the most i'm showing you both as long as you don't leave any gaps and you do a very good job You know that we have a limited color palette, so we don't have so many colors to use. So make sure that you do enough space with the yellow, right? Because if you do only three or four, then you might not have sufficient colors to um, cover the whole design, to complete the whole design. I'm so in love with this practice because such a... Um, a simple and affordable, right? Practice can give us uh, so much fun, an opportunity to review warm colors, and so the color wheel, an opportunity to just relax, have some fun, and create something beautiful, because you will see at the end, it's really beautiful. 
I posted a little short of the ones that I, my students created in school. So if you want to go back and see that, it's a good reference. But for this video, I decided to do something a little different because I wanted to focus on half of the color wheel instead to let you completely free to choose all the colors, which you can do it. Actually, I would do, we're going to do together one for the warm colors, one for the cold colors. And then I, if you like it, the technique, I suggest you to do it more and more. One, maybe you can use all the purples and purplish color on the other one you can just use all the analogous right so all the type of greens and stuff like that or you can just mix and balance together the warm and the cold palette that would be awesome let me do a few more and then maybe i can we'll go back to the yellow but for now i think that i'm ready to switch to light orange which is a little more neon that I expected I'm not very into neon colors I don't know if you are but it's okay it's gonna look great at the end nice and slow you feel all the gaps As you can see, it's really, really, really simple, easy, relaxing. Just feel relaxed to hear the noise of the markers. I know my husband doesn't like this noise at all. I do love it instead. <laughs> More here. This one is also unintentionally sort of a silence and quiet practice as sometimes I love to do. So kind of putting it all together. Spreading out and balancing the colors is also a very good exercise for about the element of space, right? How can we fulfill a space balancing the different colors that we are uh, using for this practice? And having a limited choice is a challenge that will challenge your brain and critical skills. So it's perfect. Okay, let's switch to our orange. We're going to go with 22. Mm, we are going darker. I love it. So what I do, if you notice, 
is like I go first close to the other two colors so they are already set and I'm gonna add the one or two spot near them before I go around and I start to fill other spaces. This at least is the way that I um, feel the space creating a balance between the colors and avoiding to have too much of one color and too little of another. And to make sure that we spread them out evenly through the design. Now, if you're not a big fan of warm color, because for example, I love in general all colors. I'm not a big fan of pink, but I'm getting there. I'm creating my own connections with pink as well. But definitely my favorite side of the color wheel is the cold. So all like tones of blue and turquoise and green. I really dig those colors. However, in practice, when we practice, it is very important for us to open up our mind and our experience to also our least favorite colors, something that we would not spontaneously choose. It's a very good exercise that will teach us, oh, feel free to move around the paper, of course. Um, it teaches us that, you know, to create a connection also with not our favorite things, so which is something that anyway in life we have to do many times, right? In life, there are many tasks that we will be asked to perform. They are not our favorite, but they are yet important, right? So it is important to find the right mindset to face those tasks. Let me switch on this light. It's much better. We can see much better. Today is a sunny day, but sometimes it's a, there are some clouds in the sky, so the light changes uh, often because you have like super bright and then in one minute it becomes like pretty dark because a cloud is passing and then bright again. So I'm kind of, you know, I feel like I'm a DJ with this light because I don't want it too bright and I don't want it too dark. So as I was saying, if you're not a big fan of the warm side of the color wheel, please still embrace this. So you will definitely enjoy more, more the cold colors practice that we will do in the future, but it is still an amazing practice because you still, even if you regardless your uh, preferences, you still need to be able to connect with colors and use them, right? So exposure, it's always very, very good. Practice, very, very good. And look at this, simple, super affordable, stress-free practice because they are not like difficult skills. And we can focus on colors, the quality of the coloring technique, no gaps, and the way that we can create a balanced design through the colors, spreading them properly in a space. If you need a little longer time to think of where to position your colors, please do so. As I say, I try to go on a you know regular speed that can kind of meet uh, different levels of you know um, skills and need together. So you can kind of all practicing with me, but each one of us is different, and that's the beauty of it. So please adjust your speed, adjust you know the way that you want to use this video. Mm -hmm. And I think I really love these colors, so I'm going to add a few more spots.
Here, be the corner. Now I'm gonna switch it to another type of orange. Let's see how this one feels. It's slightly darker. So I will avoid to put it exactly next to the previous orange because they are both very similar. This one is slightly darker. So I will place it next to the light orange and the yellow. But I won't place it next to the other orange. Perfect spot. And sometimes when you the markers are fresh, you cannot really see the difference in the colors. But then when they set and they are all dry and absorbed, you will see that. Mm, tricky, tricky, tricky. Let's see, we can place it here. Oopsie, actually it's near the other one. I know it gets tricky at one point, doesn't it? We try our best. Little by little are opportunities to place the color and spread and how they will become a little less free that at the beginning and a little less spontaneous because we need to kind of do some reasoning, right? So we want to make sure that we have that variety with a very limited color palette, which is a very good challenge for our brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Here it will be near this one. This one, it would be too near the other ones, but I think that I'm gonna have one uh, maybe here. Mm -hmm. Then uh, one here. Take your time, think it through. There is no rush. And you know your schedule and how much time you can dedicate in a day to the art practice. So if you need to divide the practice in two, it's totally fine. Hmm, this one we have two, so I cannot put it here and I cannot put it there, but I will put it between these two. And I know that it's near the other orange, but I'm, you see, once it's getting dry, it is showing a darker, almost a red. Here, found another little spot. I wish I could see yours because, you know, that's the only part that I miss because I really wish that I could see what you are creating. I think I'm going to put it one here. And maybe one here. And one here in the big one. And for now, I'm going to put this away. I'm going to start with the red. Let's see how bright is this red. Hmm, it is bright, a little different from the red orange. Still pretty similar. 
Also, we are using analogous color, right? The analogous color, if you do not remember, they are colors that sit together next to each other in the color wheel. So these colors are analogous like light orange, orange and dark orange, right? Red, red violet, violet, and so on. If you're new to this channel, you, I did a beautiful like video months, many, many months ago about the color wheel when I guide you through painting the color wheel and mixing the primary to get the secondary color and then secondary color to get the tertiary color. And if you wanna go ahead and practice, that specific practice was done with watercolors and we use the shape of a flower to represent the color wheel. And it was a really, really good practice. So if you feel that you want to review the color wheel, go ahead and do so. I know our choices are becoming less and less and less. So you need to think more and more and more when you place the colors. If you're doing this with your kids or with your younger students, that is an excellent activity for enhancing and supporting their critical thinking skills, right? You can ask them question, well, where would you put this color now? Did you check and did you make sure that you didn't put it already in that position and so on? If you're practicing by yourself, just ask yourself the same questions and go ahead. That is looking pretty. I'm going to put one more here. it up quickly. I'm going to put one here. <laughs> here. Maybe Maybe, maybe, maybe here. And maybe here. Maybe here. Because we need to consider the proximity to other colors, but also that we have enough red a little bit everywhere, right? In our paper, it's not concentrated in one side more than another. So I think I'm gonna go with the big corner here. Now I'm going to put the red away and I'm going to go with the red violet. Let's spice things up. This should look like a hot. We can barely see the difference right now, but then at one point it will happen. So I'm going to start to feel. I like this color near the orange, the light orange. Need the yellow. I'm gonna use it to feel maybe the small. Inside, a little bit here next to the yellow, a little bit here. 
And the cool things of having something underneath is that when you go out, you don't need to be so concerned. So it's perfect. And also look at the paper behind, right? Without the protection, all of this ink will be on your surface. They look extremely similar, but little by little, once they get dry, I start to see the differences between this like magenta, hot pink, and the red, regular red. I think I'm going to color this as well. I'm going to do this. This for sure. This. Here. I know it's getting tricky. I really like the challenge though. <laughs> Maybe here. Let's see what happened with our next color. I have this more like a hot pink violet. Let's see. Mm, nice. Uh, We are going to feel as much as possible, making sure that we create a, an harmony between these colors before we go back to the yellow. I definitely will. The yellow is the lightest and the brightest of all of these colors. So it will give a, it will be a nice final touch to add the, some light. This one here, definitely. You see how the analogous colors that we say they sit close to each other in the color wheel, they support each other by creating a, a nice like a embracing type of effect, like when you feel that everything is very cohesive. So there is like a cohesiveness and not contrast. You will have contrast if you use a the opposite, for example, the complementary colors that sit opposite on the color wheel, they also support each other very well, but in a different way. They support each other by creating a visual contrast and enhancing each other. In this case, instead, we are not creating the visual contrast, but we are creating a visual cohesiveness. So, you know, the way that we use colors in everything that we create is extremely important. Something that I always stress with my students is like, don't pick after, of course, that so we do all the practice on colors and color wheels. So I'm sure that they know their colors, the difference between hue, saturation and value, the difference between tint, tones and shades, and the difference between warm and cold, analogous and complementaries, and, you know, how the colors interact. After all of this practice, I always tell them when it's time for them to paint, to color, to proceed, to create a collage, whatever involves the use of colors, I always tell them and remind them, be intentional when you use your colors. Ask yourself, what is the feelings that you want to give to yourself and to the viewer through this piece that you are creating? What are your favorite 
or what is like the visual uh, impact that you want to create. You want to create contrast because you are expressing maybe a contrasting concept. You want to create cohesiveness because you are create a piece for a specific purpose. So always ask yourself the questions, right? This is a practice. And so I selected the color palette for you. And I say today we're going to practice with the warm side of the color wheel. So we get to review those colors and also the way that we feel about those colors and the way that those colors will actually give our piece a specific personality. The next time we're going to try the other color wheel, the other half of the color wheels, and we see what happened and we can compare and contrast them. But when you're free to choose and you're creating a piece, a project, make sure that you ask yourself questions and you answer those questions and you don't just speak randomly, but you are always making choices about the colors with a specific purpose in mind. you will notice a huge difference in your production, regardless the skill level. Mm, this violet is so bright, like it's so intense. Let me see when I can put some more. If you don't have so many colors, you can also overlap the marker. Let's say that you can overlap this one over an orange and you will have another tone of color. You can overlap this over the light, light orange. So, of course, the shading will be different, right? Because markers are not the best uh, media for blending, at least not this type of markers. But still, um, you can have some more uh, tones available if you don't have the many in your um box of markers. Mm, I think I will do this one big. Because as it dries out and I started to see it, it looks uh, very, very nice. And it's giving me a nice balance with the yellow and the very light orange that I use at the very beginning. And we're going to get back to those as well. I think that I see enough here. I see enough here. Probably actually here we need it. We have it here, we have it here, maybe one more here. And one more here. Now I am going to go back to my yellow and I'm going to add some more. To bring some brightness in this beautiful stained glass <laughs> made out of paper, a paper stained glass. Well, why not? Some warmness here. Need to be careful so we don't place the yellow exactly next to another yellow. But it could be nearby, like this, in fact. Definitely, this big spot deserves some yellow. One, two. Here. Here. 
into here as well. Now the availability of spaces is very limited. So the colors start to get together. Some of the area, I love them because they are basically almost all done. If you like a light orange more than yellow, you will feel more spaces with that color instead of using yellow. Let me see, let me see. Need to be careful, here is too close, here we have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me see. Take your time to make this final decision. You see, I put it next to this other one. So what I will do that I will go over with the light orange. So I will create another new tons of orange. And mistakes fixed. I actually like this orange very much. So probably I will switch now to the light neon orange. That was definitely not my favorite. And wherever I don't like it, I'm going to go with a yellow on top and create another type of orange, a light, very light and bright and warm orange. A little less neon than this one. But if you are into, you know, your neon colors, if you have them, go for it. As long as you respect the warm side of the color wheel. We are almost there. The design is filling up quickly. Tricky, tricky. We have two, we have one, we have one probably here. And then I am going to take the yellow and I'm going to go over some of those spots that I just feel with the uh, light neon orange. If you go over to markers, remember that we are using a copy paper, so very thin. Do not press too much because you're going to risk to break the paper. There is some bleeding of the black. It's totally natural. It usually happens with very, very light colors. So I'm giving myself a new tones of very dark yellow slash light orange that I like better. Feel free to experiment and do the same with some of the colors that you're using. Just don't press too much on the paper. I'm barely touching. Do not insist too much because you can really break the paper easily, right? And at this point, after so much work, although it was a very type of easy work, but we don't want to risk and losing it, right? Let me see, I would love to go back 
probably to a very dark orange and then I will probably overlap it I'm gonna make experiment at this point that we need to start to get creative my friend because we have a limited palette and now also a limited amount of space is available. So we really need to be creative and make sure that we keep the balance and the harmony of this design intact. So let me see what happens if I go with the yellow on top of this one, not that much, hmm, but actually it helps a little bit love it so what I will do I will actually go yellow first yellow first yellow first and then everywhere I see that that is too like the yellow is too close to another yellow or that is too much of the yellow I will actually go over with the orange on top. This orange on top. I'm gonna go on top of this yellow. I'll probably go top of this one. Maybe on top of this one. Top of this one, and that's it. I am going now with orange and hot pink. So I'm gonna do the hot pink here. But since it's very close to these other two. I'm going to immediately, before I forget where is the spot, I'm going to go over with this very light bright orange so it will give me a different hot color and so it doesn't look exactly the same. Then I'm going to do it again here. Again, orange on top to warm it up. So you make sure that you mix and match according to the palette that you have available and you try some experiment as I'm doing it of overlapping markers. Of course, so we know that they don't shade or blend as well as other media, but still it's enough for us to get some difference in the final result. Let's see what else we can mix. Maybe we're gonna mix this magenta. with the yellow on top. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna fill these two and then I'm gonna switch to the yellow and I'm gonna go over. Don't press too much. Do not insist over and over the same spot. Love it. We're gonna do the same here. And look, our design is almost done. And this tiny little spot Again with yellow, and I forgot which one was the spot, but it's okay. Oh my, almost there. We're gonna do it here, and actually, I think that here I will leave it as it is. 
gonna delete it here. I'm gonna delete it here. I'm gonna delete it here. I'm gonna grab the yellow. And I think that I'm all done. Look how pretty our beautiful paper stained glasses and look how pretty it's also on the back. I'm gonna switch to the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay guys, we are all done with this nice practice. Look how pretty this paper is. You know, it's a paper stained glass, the much cheaper, more affordable and easy to do than the regular stained glass. Of course, we are talking about two very different technique, but as I say, my students love this practice. I enjoy it because it gives me the opportunity to be completely stress-free, completely relaxed, but also start to reason a lot about the colors, the way that I feel about the warm colors, the way that I combine them together, the way that analogous colors support each other and create that visual cohesiveness, right? Now, next week, I'm gonna do another practice like this. So we're gonna use the other half of the paper that you're gonna save, you're gonna cram crumble up, and then we're gonna use the cold side of the color wheel. So we have two pieces, the same technique and same type of design, but two opposite color palettes. So you can compare and contrast and make you know your reasoning about. It's a wonderful activity, as I say, to do by yourself when you wanna just relax and shake it off with your friends, with your kids, with your students. If you're homeschooling, if you're a teacher and you need some ideas, that is really wonderful. And I hope and I wish you you know, the best day ever. And please let me know in your comment the way that you felt about the color palette, the way that your piece turned out, if you encounter some challenges. And, you know, I really appreciate your feedback. Consider to subscribe to my channel and share my page if you like the content that I'm proposing so you have this beautiful community that you are building with me grow and grow better and better and bigger and bigger. Ciao a tutti!